What is Halo Infinite's flawed map design issue right now with this game? And also, is 343 trying too hard with its dialogue to be extra important? Well, I answer your questions and a lot more in this video. So if you want to know everything, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So I recently went to my community page here and asked you guys some questions about Halo and gaming in general. And you guys certainly replied with over 80 plus comments on this post here guys. So I appreciate your participation. If your question did not get answered within this video, don't worry, I'm definitely gonna go back and pull some more questions from this thread because it was extra good. A lot of great questions from you guys. So I really appreciate the participation. If you guys wanna know when these posts do go live, yeah, all you gotta do is just be subscribed to my channel. Then you'll know when those channel posts do go live to where you can take part in the next Q&A. Let's not waste any more time and get right into those details. Jonathan Galavis asked the question if I believe along with him that 343 has kind of lost its spark or also the map design of Halo in general. Because what he kind of states here, I'm not gonna read the whole thing because it's quite a long sentence right here. But basically what he's saying is that like, Previous classic games, we have a bit more dynamic elements to the game. He brought up like elongation with like the conveyor belts and stuff like that. With like Halo 3 and Halo 2 as well with like Zanzibar and that big wheel in the middle. We don't really have a whole lot of that right now in Halo Infinite or really much in 343's games for the most part. I know he does mention also when that question about Breaker coming in with that new dynamic laser that kind of comes in every once in a while. That's a fun kind of casual addition I actually really do enjoy that 343 added into their games. But uh, definitely it's been a trend with 343 but their maps are a bit static. There's not really much in the way of player elements that can be done with the game for a whole lot. Which is kind of odd because uh, definitely with the multiplayer for Halo 2 Anniversary, they at purposely added in dynamic elements like on the Sanctuary remake, we had the waterfall come in over the base, or on the Ascension remake, where you have the shield centered part come in as well. So they've definitely dabbled in this, but they really haven't uh, gone too much into it into their own specific type of games. And I certainly would like to see this come into fruition, though I do think the biggest issue with Halo Infinite right now is that their maps kind of have to be dual purpose right now. Because I think we all can agree right now with Halo Infinite, the big issue with it is content. So if you're gonna add content into the game, you're gonna wanna make sure that content can be multi-purpose so then those maps can be part of the casual gameplay experience but also part of the ranked experience because there aren't a whole lot of maps to go around especially in the arena and definitely in the btb side of things so i think right now 343 does have to play rather safe to when they do add in a new map especially into arena that it can be something to be competitively viable i know that's something that people don't really want to hear especially for the majority of players who are social players i think that's just kind of the content dilemma that we're in right now in halo infinite i think further down the line like in a year maybe even two they probably could go a little more wild with their map design knowing that this map is definitely gonna be a social map rather than like a map that needs to be social and competitive at the same time so you definitely can have dynamic elements in these ranked competitive type of situations they just have to be very well done and that's kind of like hand in hand with developers and players to kind of create something that actually works out well so i definitely would say three for three needs to focus on making a good social experience with halo and then the competitive side of things will come from that. Though, if you are looking to get more into the competitive side of things of gaming, there is a $3,000 Halo tournament open to anyone on Z League. The link in the description and in the pinned comment down below. But yeah, that's like the whole ad. Like, not kidding. Like, that's basically all I have to say. But in case you didn't hear me, there is a $3,000 Halo tournament open to anyone. So just pause the video, check the link in the description. It takes a super short time, like 15 seconds to sign up. Not an issue whatsoever. And once you play in any other Z League tournament, you're automatically qualified to play for $3,000. So pause the video right now and click the link in the description and sign up. It takes 15 seconds for $3,000. But let's get right back to those details. Dotpot asks if you feel the same way he does that Halo Infinite's campaign feels just a bit off in his opinion. Basically kind of stating that like something just doesn't quite feel right with especially the dialogue of Halo Infinite where basically it sounds like they just everything they try to say within the lines uh, especially Halo Infinite's campaign to him 
says that they just try to be a little too over important or try to have like a important one liner very often within the game. Now, is this a sign of bad writing where you notice the dialogue much more than in previous games? Or is it a bad sign because maybe they're just kind of overusing the same kind of feeling that they want to land every single line? I feel like this issue kind of comes along with like a lot of comedies where a lot of times you need to have that downtime between the up times to kind of make those up times really stand out. So take for example like the Lego movie that we had a few years ago, right? Hilarious movie, like it's really funny. Really enjoyed that movie. The thing is though, like there's this constant joke after joke after joke that literally every single line is a joke. It loses the impact of the really impactful funny jokes. And so then you're kind of like, fatigued from laughing so much you're like huh, hell you're, you start out really laughing a lot and then like about 20 minutes and you're like huh, that's also really funny oh that's yeah that's really funny and then like by the end of the movie you're like yeah that's really funny now i never really got that sense from halo Infinite's campaign that every line was trying to be overly dramatic or super important maybe just like every single situation that they could they actually probably took advantage of it and that might be where the issue really is i didn't really notice anything with the writing being out of place so i would say like that one section with the pilot where he's just like all down on himself he's like i'm just trash i'm down with the garbage just leave me to die here and then chief kind of sits him down like you know like captain america sitting behind the chair like so he tried to stop the banished. Though it was a really great dialogue from Chief, I just kind of felt like that line from the pilot was a little forced, but other than that, like I felt like most of the dialogue in the game was very well done. I would say that the writing for Halo Infinite's campaign felt very Halo-like. There's definitely some good one-liners in the game for sure, just like the good old classic games, and so I think they definitely changed their tone with this campaign to be much more in line with the original trilogy of games. Or maybe I just need to play through the campaign again to really understand like the story parts that you're kind of talking about here. General Kenobi asks, what are your dream things you would like to be added in the future, like armor platforms, certain maps, game modes, and campaign expansions? Well, I mean, I think everyone here would certainly love some campaign DLC, wouldn't they? Well, we will talk about that a little bit later in this video for sure. Though I do think a lot of people want to have an old feeling back with Halo, right? They want their classic experience that we've had in previous games in this game. Me, personally, I want something totally new, something brand new, something groundbreaking to Halo or maybe just gaming in general, because uh, we've been playing basically the same Halo game or we've basically been chasing after the feel of Halo 3. Personally, for me, I'm not really too interested in bringing anything back as that I want something added into this franchise. Like, I know a lot of people want to see Firefight come back. Personally, I think the game was kind of overplayed and kind of seen its time. And even then, Firefight was a game mode that was trying to follow up on trends with, uh, you know, attack, defend, wave, defense modes that we had like in Horde and Call of Duty Zombies and stuff like that. I want something new. I want new experiences to be had in Halo, something we've never done before, something that might be pushing the genre of first person shooters further than we've never ever expected it to be. But yeah, like Griff Ball, zombies, having CQB armor set come back would be fantastic. Don't get me wrong, but I just don't really care for it. What I want is something new, fun, and fresh to play. I feel like that's kind of the whole purpose of Halo Infinite. It's like a fresh start and you kind of just push forward and be like, this is our vision of Halo. This is what we're going to do. We'll take note of the past, but not completely rehash it. Of course, for me, like all I do in Halo is either I play the campaign, I'll play Team Slayer, and I'll play ranked in btb like that's that's all i do in halo so when it comes to these external modes like forge i don't really mess around a whole lot of custom games i don't care for infection i don't care for firefight and so for me personally like actually, actually halo infinite's launch was pretty good for me because like that's all i really played and they delivered on that and of course some campaign dlc would be amazing but i think we're pretty far away from that and this next question dives into it as well jose vicente busto asked the question well, first he states, hi, greetings from Mexico, which I'll say back, hola, como estas? Or if I wanted to be cool about it, que tal? Do you think that 343 will launch the cross-core helmet, visors, and coatings in the upcoming weeks? And also, do you think that the Endless DLC would be released on holidays? Thanks, sorry for the misspellings. Well, I mean, I seem to read that just fine, a lot better than I think a lot of people for native English speakers type in this, you know, on the internet. But uh, to answer your question about the cross-core customization, I would say we would see that 
probably maybe with the July drop pod. This is definitely a drop pod kind of update that we would have when it comes to cross core customization. As stated, it sounded like they're gonna be working on like visors and helmets, and I think also coatings as well was kind of thrown into the cross core situation. I know a lot of people are really anticipating cross core customization, myself included, though personally, I kind of like the core system. I like being able to see a Halo character in game and recognize, oh, that's a Mark 7, that's a Mark 5, that's your Roy, that's the uh, the new one, the Eagle Strike and stuff like that. But it did sound like it was gonna be a very manually intensive process to bring CrossCore into Halo Infinite. But at the soonest we could see this happen, it would probably be late July for a drop pod number two. If not, then probably August or September. It would be either one time in a month we could see it come in. I don't expect to see the CrossCore customization just kind of come in on a Tuesday and everyone's like, hey, it's there now. Go have some fun with CrossCore. Like, it would be very well known. And I'll definitely let you guys know here on the channel whenever we do get some Drop Pod 2 information, which we recently just talked about on the channel here yesterday, if you guys want to talk about it. A 343 developer kind of goes into a little bit more about the damage updates that they're going to be doing with vehicles when it comes to Drop Pod 2. And will we get campaign DLC? Will Halo the Endless be a reality this fall? And I'm assuming no. Uh, mainly because uh, we can just obviously see that Halo Infinite is in a rough state right now in development wise, like gameplay and development wise, uh, because you see that like they, they delayed another season six whole months. And with recent leaks that just got released by Sean W, if you guys saw that video, saying that season three could also be six months as well. Allegedly leaked specula speculation, as he would say. Uh, but I don't know if I can believe it fully right now. It's just kind of like take it at its word kind of thing. Though I would be extremely surprised to see campaign DLC happen this fall. I do know that we had that cut scene from the campaign trailer announcement that we had back i believe in 2020 uh that didn't end up being in the game at all so there definitely has been some parts that have been developed and actually shot probably voice acted and created so there's still stuff working in the background that we just don't know what it is but just seeing like the state of the game and how much they're working just to make the game into a good state to really can have a good platform to build off of that i don't really expect to see any campaign dlc this year at the soonest i would expect uh fall 2023 when we could see some campaign dlc saint dave says kev now i'll say Saint Dave! <laughs> Starfield looked amazing last weekend at the game showcase. Given their past history, will Bethesda be able to deliver on what they promised? Now, I do think this is mainly tied into, well, uh, Fallout 76, which uh, certainly was a bit of a disaster when that game launched. Now, they're still supporting it. They're still putting out content. As you guys saw within the showcase, they're doing The Pit now. Now, I've heard that after a few patches updates, basically after the first year of updates and patches, so the game is actually in a pretty decent state. But the thing is that Bethesda games are kind of known, especially for their large-scale RPG games like Fallout 4, Fallout 3, uh, The Elder Scrolls as well. And it's also kind of a bit of a charm to this kind of within the community when it comes to these Bethesda games that... There's a lot of bugs and weird glitches that happen within them that it's a lot, either gonna be completely game breaking like it was with Fallout 76 or completely charming and kind of funny like it was in Skyrim. Their games are notoriously buggy and glitchy because of the large scale that they try to push every single time that basically I think they get to the point where their games are so large at the time of making them, it's almost impossible for them to do quality assurance on every little aspect of the game. So that's where you get like some weird things like a horse just like up in the air for whatever reason or something like that happens often within those games. Now, from my experience of playing uh, Fallout 4, I didn't really experience any kind of bugs, though I kind of played it really casually. Uh, definitely not a whole lot within the first year of the game's release. So that's probably when you'd see most of the bug fixes happening. And there definitely has been some concerns voiced by the community about Starfield as well, especially from what we saw. But for me personally, what I saw was pretty dang amazing when it comes to Starfield. I think there were some kind of graphical issues over there, but I think that can either be kind of looked over or either just kind of like fixed up before the launch of the game, which is going to be happening in the first half of 2023. Especially with that huge announcement of like 100 star systems, 1000 planets and stuff like that. Like that's a huge scale. Like how do you actually properly put that together without being completely broken? Because you know, he at least, you know, Todd Howard didn't say the line, the great thing about this is that the whole thing works, when in Fallout 76, it definitely didn't work. I don't expect Starfield, if it even does release Buggy, to be, like, as bad as, like, Cyberpunk 2077. Not that bad. 
I do expect it to be rather well done, uh, but I could expect to see some kind of glitches and issues coming up with the game, so that's definitely going to be expected, given Bethesda's track history with their large-scale RPG games. But I'm definitely very excited about the game. I'm actually quite glad I got delayed because I'm super excited about Modern Warfare 2 coming out in October. Then we have Season 3 of Halo Infinite stuff, and then probably about three or four months after that, then Starfield releases probably around March time frame, and I would be very happy with that time situation. If you guys are new to the channel and missed any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I'm going to link to all my gaming news and informational videos right there. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.